Hello everybody. Today is the 30th of October. A mild day, about 8 degrees. Mild for this time of year anyway. But there's a change predicted in our weather for this weekend. According to the forecast, we could get anywhere from 20 to 30 centimeters of snow on Sunday. It's still just a possibility. It could also be rain. So if I have a choice, I'm going to vote for rain. But I want to do some of the harvesting to get that out of the way. There isn't much left outside, but I want to lift the uh, Belgian endive, root leaf chicory, whichever you want to call it, um, so that I can get that stored and uh, ready for forcing later this winter. I also want to dig up one or two of the Jerusalem artichokes. Um, I won't be digging them all, I just want to see what's down there. I think they were grown from seed, so I'm not certain how large they might be, but uh, I'll leave the balance of them because that's something that you can leave safely in the ground over the winter and harvest in the spring before they start to, to germinate and grow again. And probably a look around inside of the hoopos. I think there's three good sized heads of broccoli left. I'll harvest those today. And I think I've got to bring in the uh, cauliflower soon, the nice big heads. I'm not quite sure what the best method to use for, for lifting these. If I should cut the leaves off and then lift them, or lift them first and cut the leaves off later. So I'm going to try with the fork first to lift one or two. Coming up one way or the other, I guess. Maybe get two of them. I broke the root off. But I think I'm not even going to sell this small one. I'm planting the. I started these because I watched Ian Nocton grow them last year. He had great success with them and uh, he doesn't lift his until sometime in October because he's in northern England. Climate not quite as severe as this one. I think he said eight inches of root was all that you needed to save, so I have at least eight inches there, but it broke off. I don't know how long it would have been if I could manage to get it all. Hopefully uh, with the others, once they've got more room to work in there, I'll do better. But what interested me here is this sort of has already a beginning of what a Belgian endive looks like that you buy in a store. Maybe they're not green. I think they call it a chagon or something. The thing that comes up in the middle. So I'm really not sure now how much of that I should be cutting off, but I'm going to cut it all off. You know, so. and as Ian said, the hens were really like the leaves. Maybe I should watch Ian's video before I go any further. I don't know if I should have cut that back that far or not. There's number one. I'll show you what I get when I finish. Well, that is my harvest, such as it is. This is that first one that I dug. Strange that I managed to dig that up first, because it's the only one that looks like that. Brown, and had started to grow what looks like the chicory that you force in winter. I don't know whether that will grow another one from what I've done to it or not, but I'll save it to find out. That's probably the larger of the other ones there. A lot of them are a lot smaller. Um, I'm going to save them anyway. Hopefully they will, they will produce something. I'll lay these out to dry in the basement for a day or two, and then I think, as I said earlier, I will store mine in sawdust, wood shavings. I have lots of that that I buy to use in the chicken coops, so uh, until they're ready to force, I'll keep them in my basement, which is heated, but only marginally heated. This basement is the full size of the, of the house, and there's just three electric heaters down there, and the thermostat's only set on five degrees just to make sure the plumbing never freezes in the winter time. So a month or two from now I'll try forcing the first one. The majority of what I had though were like this. 
And I remember Ian having some of those last year in his garden. I haven't saved any of those. They're going tops and all to the hens. Whether they'll eat the roots or not, I don't know, but they're going to get the leaves and the roots. I didn't see any sense in saving that. I might be wrong. Maybe you could force it, but I'm not going to bother. These will be enough for me. And while I was at it, my parsnips are in the same bed, so I, I dug two parsnips up. I had one earlier that was that long at least, but not as fat at the top. It was more uh, lengthier and, and you know, more of it was usable down this far, but it wasn't fat at the top like these. But I'm very pleased with these. The seeds were given to me by Rob, the old gardener guy in Finland. I've got to try to see if I can track down that same variety, Rob. There's the, the best of any parsnips I've ever grown. I've only grown them two or three times. But the, the rest of them I'm leaving until we have a hard frost, or a couple of hard frosts. That's supposed to make them sweeter, so I'll leave the rest in the bed. Well, they only ever got one flower on the Jerusalem artichokes, and then I guess those light frosts did a number on them. They're pretty much gone now. A lot of the other plants had blossom buds, but they didn't get a chance to break out in bloom. I think probably because they were started from seed, which meant that they didn't develop their blossom buds until much later than would be normal for them. I know there are several patches here on the island of these things that have gone wild, and there's hundreds of yellow flowers in there, so maybe better luck next year with the blossoms. Anyway, I'm going to cut down the stalks and then lift a plant or two just to see what's down there. Not such a bad harvest, considering it was only two plants that I dug up. And as I've said many times before, they were grown from seed, not from tubers, so hopefully more next year. But quite a few of them are a decent size, and then there's a lot of smaller ones. I understand fully now what people mean by there's never any need of replanting them. There would be all sorts of small ones like that still left there, which will germinate next year and, and come up to make next year's crop. I've had a lot of people comment how invasive they are. Well, yes and no. If you're not using them as a vegetable crop, they're going to be invasive because they're just going to keep spreading. But if you are digging them every year and harvesting them and using them as a crop, they will regrow, but they really shouldn't spread all that much. I worked on a farm in Alsace a number of years ago now, uh, one of these uh, exchange program things. Anyway, they grew Jerusalem artichokes. They just had them growing along a fence in a field. And they weren't spreading anywhere because even while I was there in early spring, they were digging them up and, and using them. And the small ones, like I've said, left behind would germinate that summer and, and grow next year's crop. Well, I just counted, and I think there are ten uh, heads of cauliflower. Most of them are about this size, which is, a, in my opinion, a good market size. And I don't want to let them to get very much bigger. I, there isn't any heat available here, so I doubt if they would bolt, but I don't know what might happen to them, and I don't want to lose them. They're delicious. So I'm going to take this one in for dinner this evening, and the others will be harvested in the next couple of days. And uh, I think probably... I'll make a pickle out of most of them. There are four heads of, of broccoli. I thought it was three. I just counted four. I'm going to harvest them all because they are getting to the point where they would start to bloom. And I will put those in the refrigerator and use them fresh over the next few days. And the hens will enjoy another treat of leaves. They love the leaves from any of the brassicas. And they've, they've got the endive today as well. Most of the green cabbage are hitting up. There's a nice little head down in there. It's fairly firm. The weather should continue. They'll get a bit larger, I guess. And I don't know if I counted. There's about a dozen plants, I think, all together. So if I get a small head off of each plant, I'll have enough to make coleslaw, plus to eat some fresh in salads and cooked or whatever. So it was a worthwhile project. 
Next to it, though, there's those uh, red ones, and still nothing really. I mean, that's just barely starting what you might call a head down in there, but those are not going to produce anything. It's going to get colder here soon. Well, hopefully you can hear me over the fan. Once again, I have a lot of ripe and ripening Thai chilies. I harvested a lot a few weeks ago, and they're drying quite nicely in the cabin, and there's more now than, than what I harvested then. I did a bit of an experiment, if you can see that. This is a branch that I picked off when they were all green and put them in the cabin just to see what would happen. And they are starting to ripen and dry on their own. This one's fully ripe. This one's just getting started. And I don't know. The other ones may or may not ripen. But what I plan to do is in a day or two, I will cut all of the branches off of these that have fruit. And that's most of the branches. Hang them up in the cabin, branches and all. And uh, let the ones dry that will dry. And if anything starts to spoil, I'll just pick it off. Thank you for watching. To close things off here, I know some time ago, oh, probably a month and a half ago or longer, I showed you a feral tomato plant that came up on its own in here in the hoop house. I still have no idea what the variety is. It's a very small cherry tomato. I grew a number of different heirloom varieties in here in the past. And I can't think of names of anything that would be that small, much smaller than what I'm growing this year, the Gardener's Delight. I mean, Gardener's Delight are three times, four times this size, but they are delicious. They're splitting a bit now. At least that one, well, yeah, that one there is too, I guess. They're sweet and lovely. And even though it's the end of October, the plant is still alive.